gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May we see it. In the name of Jesus. Well, on this wonderful Reformation Day weekend, let me share with you my favorite quote of Martin Luther, a quote in which he boils down these gospel lessons, a quote capturing the spirit of the Reformation, and maybe even the essence of why Epiphany Lutheran has thrived for Jesus these last six decades. In his treatise, Freedom of a Christian, Martin Luther writes, and can we read this together? Christians ought to think themselves this way. Although I'm unworthy, my God has given me in Christ all the riches of righteousness without any merit on my part. Why should I not therefore freely, joyfully, with all my heart, do all things which I know are pleasing to such a father? I will therefore give myself as a price to my neighbor, just as Christ offered himself to me. Amen? Amen. Amen. The summary of gospel life, living, explains why Epiphany pulses today with a 2020 vision of loving Jesus by loving neighbor. Waking up every day confident in God's grace, ready to live a life of thank you as you connect with God's people, as Luther says, freely, joyfully, with all our hearts. Would you repeat those three phrases with me? Freely, joyfully, with all our hearts. For me, that is Epiphany Lutheran Church. So let me tell you a few stories as to why I believe that. When Charlie invited me to preach, I asked him, do you want me to stick with the text, or do you want to stories? He said, give me the stories. <laughs> so, uh, all right. In early 1995, I was pastoring a Michigan congregation in funky Cole, Medina, and I was asked uh, to be a part of a, uh, a worship team that we had uh, coming for uh, uh, a synod assembly that was going to bring all three synods together. So I drive into Campoana for this design retreat, and for the first time, met this bubbly, talented pastor, Josh Nelson. And when I asked Josh about life at Epiphany, I'll never forget his response. We probably have more fun than the staff should be allowed. Can, can I get a wow? That's what I said. So early in 96, when I received a letter from Epiphany, about my interest in potentially serving here, I remembered Josh's comment, but I also remembered Martin Luther's comment of what a Christian community should look like, a group who freely, joyfully honored God by serving their neighbor. And Epiphany sounded like it was nailing it with that reformational spirit. So Luann and I said, sign us up. What I didn't know was not written anywhere that I was also signing up to be the chief racquetball partner of the senior pastor, Larry Hobson. Larry had served on the design team for that beautiful chapel at Miami Valley Hospital, and in gratitude, they gave Larry the access code to uh, a tiny gym and the racquetball court that all the doctors and administrators get to use. Pretty sweet deal. So every Friday morning, Larry and I, before making our hospital visits to any of you who were there in the hospital, we would do battle on the court. 
Now, Larry is 30 years older than me, but you would not have guessed it when you saw him play. I think at his retirement party, he showed a little video of Larry out on the court. And the good news, uh, we were at the beach uh, the other week, and Luann was looking at my back, and she said, Oh my gosh, all those bruises that you got when Larry shots rifle you at 100 miles per hour on the court in the back, almost totally gone. So that's, that's, that's good news. Good news. Now, while the competition was awesome, the real treat was conversing in the locker room, shouting up, debates, brainstorming, a lot of fun. But one morning, as the ideas were flying, um, Larry Stressen, uh, he just hopped out of the shower, he's got uh, shorts on and, um, and just putting on the undershirt and getting ready to grab the sweater. And I said, hey, Larry, looks like you shed a few pounds. Larry looked at his t-shirt, which was a little baggy on him, realized he had gone to the wrong locker. <laughs> Larry was putting on the clothes of the doctor who is shopping and might come up at any time. So Larry did what I'm sure just about 95% of you would have done. He quickly took off the shirt, the rest of the doctor's clothes, hung them up in the locker, shipped it to his own locker, put his own clothes on, and we exited with due stealth. <laughs> Now, it is, I was, I was chuckling all day about that, but later that evening, it struck me what Larry was doing. He was mentoring me by example, showing me that I should never be timid to try on new and different ministry approaches. Ha uh ha, -huh. yes, Larry, so wise. But then I thought, oh, well, hang on, hang on. What if Larry is really trying to teach me? I shouldn't feel constrained to wear anybody else's attitude, shed the styles of others for what truly suited me. I was so confused. At it. But Larry, whatever your mentorship point for me was that day, thank you very much for that visual <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> Freely, joyfully. With all our heart to try new ministry, reformational ministry on, oh, what fun all of us throughout the decades get to have. And I get to uh, ask to speak to you about that sort of niche in the epiphany history. Pastor Becca Pavetta, oh my gosh, creative preaching. Instead of Lake Wobegon, she would report on the gospel news from her hometown, Centerville, Ohio. I remember doing a tag team sermon or two with Becca when wrestling was really popular. I was the pastor of disaster and made a few points, and then we slapped hands, and in would come Becca, who was the minister of sinister. <laughs> right before I arrived at Epiphany in 96, I had written a, a Beatles liturgy, which I still think is being used in a good part of the country. Don Warwick and the Epiphany Praise Band was generous, and they said, yeah, let's try it. And then our own Praise Band wrote its own blues liturgy, which everyone loved. We started holding liturgy samplers, uh, where congregations from all over Ohio could come and get a, a, a taste of what we were enjoying. Characters like Captain Hook and Spider-Man and Darth Vader would show up in sermons. Meanwhile, of course, Hank Dolman and John Benjamin and crew were knocking it out of the park in traditional worship. Worship attendance grew from 600 something in 1996 to just over 1,000 when we rang in Y2K. Freely, joyfully, with all our hearts. What was so energizing for Luann and me was. Just watching you, this great cloud of witnesses, as Hebrews 12 calls the saints, and as your uh, stewardship theme picks up with Charlie's creative presentation. Jan Panny and team running this amazing food and clothing pantry. Ed Watson had us providing Christmas gifts and food for about 90 different under-resourced families. And here's a picture of the 
old gym before we had to take that down. The uncomfortable K-Ween and team brought magic each Advent and summer, eliciting all kinds of talent from disciples and visitors alike. Jim and Joyce Evans and crew <laughs> mobilizing so many of us to host those still searching for permanent homes in Interfaith Hospitality Network. Pete Nichols had his home with Habitat for Humanity. I think for a stretch we built one a year. We're actually honored to build Dayton's 50th Habitat home. Trips for Hurricane Katrina Relief, where we outfitted and donated a work trailer. Chris Oakley and the Vineyard's blessings of interacting with Mommy and Baptist and Pastor Cunningham and family. I wish I had those pictures, the pulpit exchanges, the married parties. We hosted a, a talent show trying to bring the kids from the west side of Dayton together with our kids on the south side. And what two wonderful civil rights pilgrimages with Mommy and Don in Alabama with the legendary Pastor Bob Gretz. One of the few white Lutheran pastors witnessing alongside Martin Luther King. Oh, I wish I had those pictures. We really try to help young adults connect and create a leadership farm system of sorts. We went on rafting trips, therefore, ski trips, camping trips, Hofbra House trips, whatever Jesus required. <laughs> A trip to the Boundary Waters of Canada with our kids, and uh, one of the kids drew uh, a sketch of us canoeing, and it still is in my office today. Of course, three amazing trips with high school youth, and one with our adults to our Germany partners. Here's one of the group in front of the Luther statue uh, in Wittenberg, and in the yellow circle, hard to see who is that young girl? was your contemporary music worship director, Michelle Borns, back in the day. So eventually, Pastor John, in our days acquiring uh, the new land at Austin campus, and Pastor Sarah Cutter, who is now down in Georgia with me, just had a fantastic lunch with Sarah in Savannah. On and on, this great cloud of witnesses that you provided so many names, so to remember, thank goodness, the faithful Jane Lane was always standing close by to help us out. Here she is in one of Dayton Airport's hangars. Uh, and when we did the Your Wind, Our Wings kickoff campaign, there she is greeting everyone by name as they came in. Well, Jane could help you with names, but every once in a while, there were moments... Remember at staff meetings, we would uh, get the visitor cards. We really worked hard to follow up on everybody. So, okay, Becky Lee, here's Becky's number. Okay, I'll take that one. Good. Um, next one, uh, Jim Johnson. All right, you got Jim. Here's his phone number. Right, next one. Interesting. What? Frobles. Frobles, man. Okay, no phone number, but address they give it 34 Orchard Circle. So back in the day, you actually had to unfold the map. And, uh, okay, you have to bring it out here. You have to search for about 10 minutes. We don't have in Centerville an orchard circle. Okay, well, what's the first name? Robert? Robert Travels. Bob? Bob for, Bob for apples. <laughs> Jim Evans has struck again. But every other month, you get a fictitious visitor showing up. What a royal waste of time that was. <laughs> Every other one, but who knows? Maybe day two, Jim, we're part of the joyful cloud of epiphany witnesses. I am glad I'm still on your email list of interesting humor that comes through. Priceless. Well, speaking of Bob for apples and orchards, let me tell you uh, this story. As I understand it, Epiphany's wonderful land used to be part of an apple orchard. And some of you remember that all the offices used to be located in the old farmhouse uh, that way. And uh, uh, Larry's office and Becca's office were up on the, the top floor in the old bedrooms. And I was sort of the last uh, uh, to come. And so my office was not the House of Seven Gables, but the, the room of a thousand nooks and crannies. <laughs> and I wondered, what in the world was this 
room ever used for it. Maybe you know, it probably had to be the, the nursery or a little kid growing up here would really enjoy this crazy looking room. Well, fast forward a few years ago, I was down in Haiti where over the years it's been a delight to go to Charlie and Jay and Epiphany uh, and with my congregation down there. But on one trip, I was talking to this neat lady named Carrie. And uh, where are you from? Da, 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 da. And we keep going. Her maiden name, Myers, turns out that Carrie was a baby and a little girl who grew up in that office. Her dad was Epiphany's third pastor, Doug Meyer, and they lived there when um, that house was the pastor's parsonage. And we laughed and laughed when we heard that holy connection. Here is a picture that I found with Pastor Meyer. Uh, he is the third one from the left. Uh, and the other is Pastor Stellhorn, Epiphany's mission developer. But indeed, what a cradle, what a nursery Epiphany has been for so many leaders and future pastors and kingdom initiatives. As an orchard, how much fruit have you provided God's kingdom over the years? As you can imagine, this sermon felt impossible to write. I don't know how the other guest pastors have done it. To share all the great memories for which I am thankful. But I remember that after uh, Larry and Becca finished their service in 2000, I was the only pastor here for about 17 months. And it was a crazy but energetic and positive time. We were building the two wings. I'll never forget when the Celebration Center, just the core, was there. We said, we got an opportunity. So we bought a bunch of spray paint cans and, and, and little cans of paint and big jumbo markers. And all the confirmation kids went in there with their families and their guys. And we had a great evening just writing scripture and writing prayers of hope for the future in our names. And I wish I could show you those pictures that covered the beams and the floors and the walls. Epiphany, I wish I could show you a thousand pictures of how I saw you living out the gospel freely, joyfully, with all your heart. I can't show you a thousand, but let me show you at least two moving pictures of my kids, Luke and Morgan. When they heard that I was preaching, they said, could we give a shout out of gratitude and thanks? So many of you, through the Youth Praise Band and the Child Care Center and Drama Team Confirmation, helped build my kids up. And Luann and I are grateful. So let's see if this works. Hey, I'm Luke Greasy here. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, where I've been working in the music business. I have a lot of things to get into epiphany for my love of music. I have so many fun memories of playing in the Praise Band there. Many awesome groups Epiphany offers. 
I thought it was really neat just last week that some of the kids you see in this picture of their own volition got together, called each other up from Columbus and Cincinnati and Atlanta and rendezvoused in Nashville to keep their faith friendships rolling. I've talked about a cloud of witnesses. The reality of a cloud is that sometimes it can be cloud nine, but sometimes the clouds can get dark. And for some of us, perhaps not all, that too was part of Epiphany's history. Darker days when it seemed like we talked more about rules and righteousness instead of the freedom and the joy that Christ has won for us with his arms wide open, welcoming all of us in more ways than one. Tough days when Epiphany had to sort some things out, just like the Reformation. Sometimes, like Luther, you've got to nail your theses to the door, your convictions, and trust the Lord will lead you and those you love. Those were hard days when Luanne and I decided that in order to keep the Epiphany spirit that we treasure, we actually had to leave Epiphany. So the Holy Spirit could help shape things out. Well, the Spirit has reformed you. In Epiphany, you are rolling and thriving. Charlie and Jay, all of you, bravo. Now, clouds are so wonderful because they keep changing form, right? As the Holy Spirit blows. Thank you for the beautiful shapes you are helping Epiphany to be. The outdoor chapel, wow. The expansion of Austin campus, amazing. Jay, I'd love the few moments that I've had with him, a great guy and pastor, but at the annual conferences, I get to hang out with Charlie. But here's uh, the Mustang convertible we shared down in the Florida Keys on the way to a snorkeling trip we took together after the conference. And Charlie helped me learn that after snorkeling, when the boat is bobbing up and down, you might want to go easy on the rum punches. <laughs> If you are on Facebook with Charlie, you saw this whole picture from his recent trip to Europe, which I think captures beautifully his amazing sense of humor. And uh, I think you should demand that in the sermon and in the weeks to come, he provides for you all the captions that were provided by his Facebook friends for this picture. My sermons uh, were always so short with you, so I thank you for your grace and my loquaciousness today, but let me wrap up by taking you on this Reformation weekend to Wittenberg, Germany, where you allowed me to go in 2007 on my sabbatical. First, let me show you the portal to Luther's house all over the town of Luther. You see two benches built into every archway. Epiphany, as you move into your seventh decade, please keep being a place that invites people to sit down and to talk with one another, to listen to each other, various points of view and opinions, and less time standing to point out what people are doing wrong. Keep inviting questions and discussion. Keep fostering relationships in your small groups and with the community. Secondly, finally, let me take you to the church in Wittenberg. No, not this castle church where Luther nailed the 95 theses on the door at one side and into which the door, our Epiphany youth one year, uh, climbed into the castle and got to stay there. So cool. Let's go instead to St. Mary's, the community church, inside of which Luther's kids were baptized at the font, observed here by our young Morgan Weesey. In 2007, our family got to climb to the top of St. Mary's and walk between the two cupolas that they have. Inside of one of them is the bell tower, but in the other, there was a small apartment. And throughout the ages, uh, a watcher had to live up there, sometimes with his family. The watcher's job 
to keep an eye out for fire. If they spotted a fire in this town made of wood, they would ring the bell of the town. So everyone would come out of their home and shops and they'd look to the church. And with a flag by day or a lantern by night, that watchman would point out the direction of the fire. And everyone would drop what they were doing and go be a blessing together. So Epiphany, keep rolling, my friends, into your seventh amazing decade. Like Luther's home church, so many people have heard your bells ring in more ways than one. And have looked to you to see which direction they should go. Like that tower watcher, keep your eyes open so you can help your neighbors near and far. You have always been a church that rallies people together with Jesus' hope and then send them out to change the world. Happy Reformation Day. This was the day that eventually caused Luther to stand before the Holy Roman Emperor and say, I can't recant. So help me God, here I stand. It was one of my life's great honors to say for 14 years, here I stand at Epiphany Lutheran Church, standing in the pulpit, standing at the divine, standing all around town with you, with Jesus, who helps us not only stand, but dance. And say it with me, freely, joyfully, with all our hearts.